welcome to MMB Air Gun Review. Well, as you know, we did an unboxing the other day of the Sig Sawyer um, MCX Virtus PCP air rifle. Upon inspection of that rifle, we discovered that the barrel was quite loose and the actual air fill tank was wobbly. After a call to Sig Sawyer, they sent me a shipping label to send it back. But I must say, upon farther um, investigation into this rifle, I see that this has been an issue on a lot of rifles, and I thought maybe it'd be more helpful to dive into this rifle and see exactly what the issues are, just in case any of you out there are having the same problem. So we're going to take our time today and uh, go over this and try to resolve these issues. Um, I have resolved the barrel issue a bit, and if you remember correctly, the flash hider was loose. When I did tighten up the flash hider, it did tighten up the barrel a bit. But there still is a bit of free play, and of course your accuracy is going to suffer. So we're going to attempt to, to make a cheap and expensive shim to put in there. Now bear with me, I'm opening this up for the first time, so you're learning as I learn. But hopefully with a little bit of common sense, we can take care of this together and um, maybe resolve some issues out there. <laughs> now I did have a, a subscriber tell me that the trigger mechanisms on the inside of these, and I mentioned this the other day also, were, were would bind and they caused what appeared to be a jam, although it wasn't really a jam, it was the, uh, the trigger catching. Now I can tell you right now that if you look inside of these, they have resolved that issue because there's nothing for that trigger to rest on. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but there's nothing for that trigger to rest on in there. So that machining process, although it is on one side, it is not on the other. So that trigger mechanism in there cannot catch any longer. So obviously, Sig Sauer has resolved that issue. Okay, let's get into this. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the hand, the uh, pistol grip. And that's just a, uh, Phillips head screwdriver. And what's nice to know about these, this appears to be a standard pistol grip, so any any AR style grip would fit on here. There is no spring to lose or anything like that. Um, another thing, this particular rifle, if you're expecting like a a more realistic AR lower, this is a, is, is a sandwich together lower. This isn't a type of lower that splits in half. It doesn't have any takedown pins or anything like that. So I just want to make that clear now. If, if you're purchasing one and you, you think that it's going to have takedown pins and come apart, it doesn't. It's, it's not like the, uh, it's not like the uh, SBR battle rifle, which actually comes apart just like the authentic AR-15 that does not do that. So. I love this. Anyhow, this particular one does not do that, although it does look amazing. Another thing is a lot of people don't like the polymer rail. These polymer rails are great. For those of you who don't know, they've been using polymer rails on AR style guns for a good many years and they work really well. Okay, so we got that done. Now we're gonna attempt to get, because I did tighten it, we're gonna attempt to get the flash hider off, which should be pretty easy. Yep, there we go. Flash hider is disassembled. We're gonna sit that to the side. We're gonna shut off our light here. My little helmet light, all I could find. Now, upon loosening that flash hider, I did find now that the barrel is a bit loose again. So it must be there's a mechanism inside that comes loose when that's loosened up. Okay, so what we have now, to take this rail off, we have some Allen heads or Allen screws here. One, two, and it appears to be three, and maybe there's one in the front. But I can't tell that yet until we get off the front sight. Which, bear with me because... We are learning this together. There is not an Allen head up front. Okay, so we know that is not an issue. So we are going to first remove the top one. 
And of course that's going to be a different size than the bottom ones, isn't it? So we're going to first remove the bottom ones. Maybe. Maybe. Yep, yeah, that's loose. And that's loose. Now we're going to see what makes this thing tick and what the problem is. Now, I guarantee you your accuracy is going to be off with any type of movement in a barrel. Um, I don't know how, how deep we're going to dive into, dive into this because it may require some, some other things that uh, I'm not foreseeing. So there's that. I'm going to set those screws over to the side over here. So your bottom is done and now we got to find a key that will fit the top and I'm hoping this one does the trick. Not only does it do the trick, it's loose already. So that's not even tight. Something tells me when they put this gun together, they didn't tighten anything up. Anything. So that's going to be the top one. We're going to set that over there. Now, theoretically, this should slide off. And there we go, and there you have it. So here is your barrel assembly. Now, so this must be... And that is the problem right there. So this whole barrel is loose because it kind of screws together. So what we're going to do, we're going to start out really simple. Actually, let's, before we get into this, we have to remember, we still have to take care of that wobbly uh, section back here. So we're going to leave this like this for now. Maybe tighten up these screws right here. Oh, come on, Sig. They're not tight. Come on, Sig. This is this is unacceptable. Unacceptable on any level. Very disappointing. I'm gonna make sure that this is good and tight right here. Yeah, this is a good thing we're getting into this. There, now we got some tight screws on the barrel. And now we have no wobble. Amazing, right? So these are these screws right here and there is two on the other side also. So let's hit those and loose. And loose. No wobble. Wow, it's amazing what a screwdriver will do, Sig. Okay, that upsets me a little bit because now we've had one issue, two issues, three issues. Loose flash hider, loose barrel, wobbly air tank. So, although the rifle appears to be a nice rifle, it seems that whoever's putting these together needs to be fired. So we'll see if we can get in here. Pull this apart. If I can get my, I'm gonna need a smaller screwdriver for this. I am gonna break and I'll be, don't have a small enough screwdriver without scratching this receiver up. So I don't wanna do that. Now looking in here, this is the wobbly part but appears to me that I can shim this. Now, they do say that once you put air in these that they tighten up. I don't know, to me, uh, a wobbly air tank is unacceptable. So, we'll address that issue in a second. But for now, let's do this. Let's take this rail. Let's address the barrel issue first. Let's take the rail and slide it back on where it goes, get on there, like so, and we want to see, okay, so there's that. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to build a little shim to slide around the end of this barrel so it does not wobble, or at least build it up a little bit, and what I have to do that First off, I need to mark the barrel so I know exactly where it is when it's slid through. So, let's get that done. And I'm going to go into the front, and this is going to be the front of the barrel. Let's go underneath where you don't see if I can mark it up there. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to pull that off, and i got a mark on the top and the bottom. And when I say the amount is trivial, it's a trivial amount, and I can see where if this was not um, cast correctly, the polymer was not made correctly, that you're going to have that issue. However, 
that we are going to fix that issue. And what we're going to use to fix that issue is some carbon fiber. Now this is a, um, not a vinyl carbon fiber, this is an actual carbon fiber wrap made of real carbon fiber. It's quite expensive. Um, I buy these in bulk. I don't use, don't really use them for firearms, I use them for other things, but if we got it, we're gonna use it just to fill some space. It's very durable, it doesn't break down. Let's see here. And where do I get it? I usually get it on eBay. But just so you know, ahead of time, the stuff's very expensive. Uh, another good idea is if you want to cut up a tin can, a soda can, and cut it up, and, and we may end up doing something like that for a shim for the back, as a matter of fact. So, where did I mark that barrel? Right there. I'm going to wrap this right there around that barrel. And this is some strong stuff, guys, so it's really even hard to stretch. But, if I could remove some, that's fine, as long as I can get that slack taken up. Now, I might have put too much on. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But, let's get this down here. Let's see if we can get that to slide through. It's gonna catch. What do we got here? Not all the way down on it, apparently. Is that catching? That is our question. Does that want to go on? So I may have, just may have used a little bit too much. I believe I did. So I'll pull that off. Yes. Yep, I can see where it caught. So just, that's how minute it is. So we're going to peel some back. This stuff sticks really hard too, so it's hard to get off. We're going to peel some back. Not a lot. But just a bit, we're going to peel some back, then I'm going to cut it. Now, like I said, this is really durable. You could actually use this stuff on the barrel of a, of a real firearm, and it will not melt on you. Okay. Oh, let's see what we got here. Take up that slack. And bam, there we go. And that is how we do that. That made a nice little rest for that. Okay, perfect. See, see how this pushed this back? That's what kind of what I wanted, a nice groove for it to sit into. Now we're gonna take our second layer This is what it's going to actually rest on. So what this carbon did is it built up and it built a nice ridge. See that ridge it built? So that's a stopping point. So it's not once this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this. And then once that's heated, that will, that will actually get hard and it won't move. So we'll, we'll take this apart later on. We'll get this kind of so you know what you're doing if you if you decide to do this. Like I said, this is just me shimming it, how I'm gonna do it. You can use any method that you wish. Okay. And once I heat this stuff, it becomes like a, almost like a hard plastic. And when I say heat it, you don't gotta heat it much, guys. Uh, a uh, deformant, you don't, see now. This might be a little bit too much, so hold on here. I'm taking my time, guys, because I do not want to ruin it, okay? This over and over. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, your accuracy is definitely going to be a lot better. Actually, I'm gonna heat that, probably leave it right on and heat it. It'll perform right into place, so that's never gonna move again. So let's get this rail back together. So there's your barrel issue, guys. It's moving on you. You've got some accuracy issues. That's gonna be your culprit. 
at least one of them. And I apologize if I am boring you to death, but this is an issue that I know a lot of you are having. So I thought it would be helpful and we could learn this together. I know it's scary to dive into a gun sometimes and not know what you're getting into. I get it. But at the same time, I work on real stuff all the time and I got a pretty good idea of how things are. So and look at this. See, we're actually going to tighten this stuff. Imagine that. Wouldn't hurt to put a little thread lock on it. I should have grabbed some, but I didn't. So don't follow my example. Beautiful. Okay, now different size. I don't know what size these are. So I just kind of grabbed them to and got lucky by eyeballing it. But I will tell you, the gun even screwing it together right now feels it just feels. Now we don't have a rattle. Oh, that's amazing. See, now I can say, hey, it'll probably shoot straight. If it shoots right. So we're gonna put the flashlight on. Now, if you remember from the previous video, this was not even close to tight. So, and I'm not gonna tighten it now. We're just gonna snug it. That's it. Not any play or movement. Amazing. Now, I imagine being an air rifle, you could, I don't know if you could get away with electrical tape simply because it, it might bunch up and move around and be not sticky for you. I do think you could get away with a small shim such as, this is what I was prepared to do, but this is probably what we're gonna do in the back. Hey, be careful you don't cut yourself. But a small, this is literally how thin it is, a small thin piece of tin can that's cut proportionally to fit around there. Um, if you're be careful and take your time, you could probably make that work too. I just happen to have the carbon and it uh, it works for a lot of stuff that I needed to work for. Okay, so now that's done. Now we gotta solve this issue. And let me show you what that issue is in case because okay, any of you forgot, okay? That issue is this. So I'm gonna screw this in. I'm not gonna put it in tight tight, but I'm just because I'm gonna pull it right back out again. But I want to show you this. Look at this. See that wobble right there? That's unacceptable. I don't know why anything would ever be made that way. Now, I've covered this already in carbon fiber, as you can see. Just because I wanted to cover up the words, it looks a little better. But, and I probably could shim it with the carbon fiber and it's seat up in there nicely, probably. I'm gonna guess, I can see where the line is. I probably could get away with that. But the issue really lies in the machining here in the receiver, okay? Probably not the machining on the tank, but it's gonna lie, well, in two, two ways. It could sit in the outside ring, a little more firm in place. And the inside, which actually, you can hear move, also could fit into that inside ring a bit better. Now, I'm gonna take a peek. I'm gonna to try to gauge this with a little piece of that can to see maybe if that can will work. Like I said, we're going through this experiment together. So what I'm gonna do, cut a piece of this can off, and I'm gonna see if I can shim that. And guess what, I can shim it. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do. Now, how far around can I shim it? That is the question. And how many, how many shims can I fit? So what I wanna do is, cut a nice clean piece, now that we know what we're doing. And I'll show you on camera here what exactly what I'm about to do. And work, bear with me because this is my, may take a few minutes. Okay. Get some cleaner edges is what I'm trying to do, guys. 
because it will rocket science. So, if you look right here around this edge, the outer lip to the shiny part that the uh, air tank screws into, the outer side of that where the outer lip meets the inside of the receiver. This is the part that has that wobble to it. And it fits in there nicely, but any amount of gap, anything, even my new, even my new as far as this thing, all the way around turns into a big wobble. So it's a machining process. They, they, don't, they don't have the tolerance that's tight enough, basically. Um, and I'm sure probably some of them are tight enough, depend, depending on the tooling that they're using and how worn out that tooling is. So let me, I know a lot of this is hard for me, for you to see because I'm trying to get this done and I want to work on camera for you. So I'm going to gauge this again and see exactly how that shim will fit in there. At that time it didn't want to go. So let's see what we can do. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so that, as you can see, that shim that I've just created sticks in there with no problem, okay? So, I'm gonna try to shim the other side just to see if I can take up slack on both sides or does it have to be one side? Okay. Looks to me like it's going to be the one side. So this part that I cut is about three quarters of an inch in width. And now I'm gonna cut this three quarters of an inch down. I'm gonna experiment. Not, it's still three quarters of an inch, but I cut it in half so it doesn't stick out and cut your fingers, basically. better I can get that in there, the better it will be. Now, it's hard to, to get in there for sure. And actually, as I move this around, I'm finding where the machining is bad and where it's good. So there we go. Okay, so as you can see, you see how I got that in there right now? So I tried to go all the way around the inside of the receiver with this just now. And that is the only spot where it would fit in. So that tells me that the machining is wrong in that one particular spot. But I wanna make sure that's driven all the way up into there, which it is. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm just bending this edge a little bit back as I'm driving it up so it does not have a sharp edge, which is working out beautifully. Now, what's nice about this, guys, is you could do you could have you could do do these over and over if you need to. This is not this is easy. Okay, got that shoved up in there. No sharp edge. So basically, that's all I've done. And I'm there's still a slight no, there's I still hear a slight wobble. So I'm gonna see if I can shim another spot. I can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this one, since I got that, I just shoved it down in there pretty good, is I'm gonna cut that right now. And that tab over so it doesn't cut me. And I'm gonna push it. So I have two shims in there now, in two different spots, very close to each other. But it won't fit. The shim will not fit all the way around it only in those spots now some of you might be saying hey but you know like you said it tightens up after you put air in it i don't know that i haven't aired it up yet but i don't want it to move because my philosophy is this what if i don't have air in it that wobble can't be good for the mechanisms inside and all your air tubes right so now before we get this back together <laughs> that's what i've done you can see that that's what I've done. So, <clears throat> I'm going to take the pel pelgun oil because 
I just do not want um, a drain and dry seal. So I'm just putting that on the whole ring and I'm going to put it a little bit where it seats here. My peace of mind, guys, I use this stuff because I'm a paranoid SOB about my seals and stuff. So, there's that. Now that we got that, I'm going to place this air tank in here. Now, look at this. Now we have an air tank that don't rattle back and forth. Amazing, right? You may have to work with this for a while, but make sure she's tight. Yeah, that works pretty good. And I'm going to do something else simply as an assur assurance that it's not going to move. Just me, because like I said, I, uh, but we don't have that wobble now. And that was terrible. Okay, so let's get that off. So those shims, the shims worked. It is the internal part that wobbles, but so this seats in and you can see that you have an area here that could very easily um, be manipulated back and forth also. So we are going to do another carbon fiber strip. How big? that big that big so we're gonna say that is three quarters of an inch and I'm going to set this right here for a second and hopefully I didn't get any Pelgon oil on this tank because I really don't want to run and grab my alcohol this off there. And what I'm going to do, let's see, this would be the bottom of the tank there. So what I want to do is I want to start here. And I'm going to build myself up a little lip right there that will crush in as I turn it in like that, like so. Pull it up, wrap it around. Do not do this with electrical tape, guys. It will not work. I guarantee it. And I may need heat for that. And then this should compress fit it and form kind of like I did with a barrel and form my seal a little bit better. I'm going to trim this when I get done so that part you see sticking up will not stay. Oh, guys. That's amazing. See that? Look at that. No wobble. That's good. Okay. Now I'm going to come back through when I get done with my razor knife and I'll trim right around there and that'll make a permanent seal on that so that even took up that space. Little ingenuity and we can get stuff done. Okay, I'm going to put my handle back on. I guess I really didn't need to remove it, but I didn't know what I, I planned on taking the, the receiver apart, which I did not need to do. And like I said, the trigger pulls fine on it. I have not fired this yet, so... We are definitely going to have to um, figure everything out once we start shooting. I have no shooting impressions yet. Um, so basically, I got to screw that back together, of course. The uh, pistol grip. But basically, guys, we now have a gun that does not have a loose tank and does not have a loose barrel. I hope this helps you out a little bit. It's not real hard to do, maybe be a little time consuming, but it's not hard to do. Like I said, I'm gonna trim this little piece off while it's cold, I, then I heat all this up, it'll set, it'll be nice and firm, nothing's moving around. Maybe you wanna send yours back to the company. It's not that I don't suggest that. For me, I feel better doing this myself rather than sending it off and having it come back and the same thing happen or another problem arising. Um, 
like I said, I haven't shot it yet. Maybe it'll be a total hunk of junk once I run some rounds through it, get some pellets run through it. But I can be happy with it now that I've done this. At least I know that, that this part can be done. Um, Sig Sauer, you got to step up your game in your in your quality control. This is a machining issue is what this is. This isn't something not being tight, except for that barrel. Screws weren't tight. And put some Loctite on your screws. If you're going to tighten them, put some Loctite on them. This is, this is not how we assemble things, okay? And these guns are built in Japan, I believe. And usually, things built in Japan are pretty good. Um, so this is kind of disappointing. And, and what's disappointing is there's a lot of rifles out there that are having these same issues. Now, SIG did address the trigger binding issue on the inside. And my trigger's nice and tight. And, and it seems to have a decent pull. We'll get to that later on but this these issues are simple issues to fix if you got a bunch of guns you know you're getting the guns back because just one quick google search and i found tons of guns that were having this problem and the barrel is a problem accuracy problems it, it trigger jam problems all this stuff if i can fix this on a quick simple video and point pinpoint the problem obviously you guys can do something too you know don't have people send in the guns. Do a recall on your guns. Get them back from the people you're distributing them to. And do a recall. Fix them. And then send them back to them. Because this is unacceptable. This is taking away a lot of time from consumers. I would have had to ship this away for two to three weeks before I got it back. And I don't know what I'm getting back. Because everybody who's, you know, tested these rifles out and shipped them to SIG and they get them back. And they do the same thing later on. So that's unacceptable. And Sig Sauer is a great company. They make great firearms. And they put their name on this. Now, of course, these are manufactured in Japan. But they put their name on it. And to have that name on it, you got it's got to mean something. So the, the rifle looks like a nice rifle. I'm sure when it's on, it's on. Quality control is a big thing. You know, you get these rifles back. There's got to be a number on the box or, or a serial number where where you can you can find out where it was made, who had their hands on it. Get them out of there. They don't need to be touching this stuff. Um, you know, they're gonna cut. They're costing you money. So and they're costing us time. And it's costing us money. You know, I pay three hundred dollars for for a rifle, even though it's not you know it's not a, a high powered PCP, but it's a fun PCP should be. And it is people's hard-earned money, so let's get it right. Let's get it right. If you're going to put your name on it, get it right. And one more thing on these, you got it. You got to make this. You got to make these open because because Crossman's ahead of the game. We got two names. We got Crossman and we got Sig, right? Um, what do you going to think is going to have more functionality and more more features, the Crossman or the Sig? And the Sig's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful. But look at it. We have a functioning bolt. And of course, this isn't going to function because it's a pellet gun. But have, you know, ha have the port open. Have it open. You can have a mock bolt. Have it open. Th this thing's miles ahead, honestly, as far as as far as function goes. Um, this this doesn't miss a beat. You know, <laughs> this could be there with little effort. With so little effort, with so little effort, that's the thing. Um, retool if you got to, but get it done, Sig. With that, I'm going to leave you guys. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I might have bored you right to death, but I hope I helped some of you out there a little bit at least. Um, if you like this video, could you please just take take the time to give it a thumbs up, um, hit that like button, subscribe, share really helps me out and it makes me able to bring you more content, maybe some more how-tos and, uh, and upcoming, upcoming uh, videos that I have. So thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. And keep it real and good luck in 2021. Um, it's a crazy world we live in.